Video streaming and the Nintendo Switch have been an odd little mix. The system didn't launch with any video streaming apps, and the ones we got post-launch just kind of showed up, being real stealthy. Even months after its release, a lot of people had no idea that the Switch had a Hulu app in the United States. But the big one wasn't Hulu. The big one is YouTube, which the Switch finally has. Another semi-stealth release. Here is my review of the YouTube app for the Nintendo Switch. When you boot up the app and take a look at the user interface, it's the same user interface as the PlayStation 4's app. You've got a vertical sidebar on the left-hand side of the screen with search and all of your other functions, along with a smaller horizontal screen at the home menu to show you different genres when you're cycling through your videos. To be a bit more specific, the sidebar options include a search function, the home menu where it shows you all of your recommended and featured videos, subscriptions where you can stay up to date on all of the YouTubers that you're subscribed to, folders where you can look at your search history, watch your own videos, and look at your playlists, and then at the bottom you've got your account settings and the app settings where you can modify different values like restricted mode and linking up accounts to the app. All in all, it's a pretty simple design interface, and it's made even more simple with the fact that the control options offer both button controls and touch controls. So if you're more of a controller person, you can navigate through the app with the Pro Controller or the Joy-Cons, or when you're in handheld mode or tabletop mode, you can tap on videos to watch them with the touch screen. But the touch controls do have a bit of a flaw. You can tap videos and options just fine, but you cannot slide or scroll through options with the touch screen. Every slide or swipe gesture registers as a tap, so if you want to scroll through a bunch of videos, you have to use the arrow buttons on the controllers. Now, when you're actually watching a video, you do have a lot of different options that you can mess with, like turning on captions, changing the quality, liking or disliking, and even going into the channels themselves and subscribing and unsubscribing. This works so well that instead of doing it on my computer, I actually cleaned up my subscriptions list through the app itself. But there is one minor thing about this user interface that I don't like. Extra inputs for the skippable ads. Despite the fact that the skip ad button automatically highlights itself when it's ready, you have to do two taps or two button presses to actually skip the ad and start the video. Now replicating the PlayStation 4 app is all well and good, but what about the app's performance on the Switch? When you're booting it up and going through the user interface, it's extremely smooth and extremely fast. I never encountered lag when I was navigating around through the app, and it actually plays a lot smoother than the app does on my PlayStation 4. Now let's talk about quality of the streaming. Video quality is very good. Be it in handheld or docked mode, the video quality always looked nice, crisp, and clear, and there was a clear difference when you went and changed the quality. The sound volume, on the other hand, is a bit weird. To be more specific, the volume of the app is very, very low. When I've got my Switch in handheld mode, I have to almost max out the volume just to hear people talking in Let's Play videos. And I'm not talking about my older videos before I switched up the Blue Yeti settings. I'm talking about other streamers and Let's Players like TFS Gaming. And it seems to be the same when you've got it in docked mode. I always have to pump up the volume quite a bit just to be able to clearly hear what all the people are saying in the videos. Granted, this is nothing new because I have to do the same thing with my Smart TV's YouTube app and the PS4 app, but it's still a bit of an annoyance when you have to constantly change the volume levels when you go from playing a game to watching the app and back to playing a game again. That's not the only thing I'm going to say about the sound, though. The YouTube app does not support mono audio. That means if your Switch's system settings are set to mono audio, YouTube will not play any videos and will constantly toss you error messages. So if and when you get download this app, go into your system settings and make sure you're set to stereo. Next, let's dive into battery life for a second. Streaming video I've always felt wouldn't push the system nearly as far as games would, and it clearly doesn't. The YouTube app has a battery range of 3 hours and 43 minutes with maximum brightness, up to 4 hours and 54 minutes with lower brightness. So if you just want to do a YouTube marathon, you can do that for a good 4-5 to five hours. Now, in conclusion, YouTube on the Switch is just like it is on the other consoles, but a lot faster and a lot smoother. However, it does come with its own little bundle of frustrations. 
From the partial touch controls to the various sound glitches, you're gonna need to do some adjustments to use this app properly. Though once you do, you'll find that this is a very nice little app for people who wanna take a break from their games for a couple minutes and catch up with their favorite YouTubers. Reviews to Go rates YouTube for the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at reviewstogo.com. Hey there guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Just want to remind everyone that if my Patreon campaign reaches at least $100 per month, I will remove any and all advertisements and monetization from this channel. That's at patreon.com slash reviews to go. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.